You are listening to Tone Deaf Radio. Turn me up.
Swear to God. Now, actually, I, I, I was going to use it as a background song first. But I was like, nah, nah, whoever did this put some work in. So let's let's go ahead and open the show with them. Uh, especially I, being look, especially being the we'll fact see. that we're about to talk about money in the bank tonight, dog. It's this weekend. Yeah. There's a lot going on this weekend. Now I think about it. It's a lot. That's definitely true. Yeah, yeah it's... Um, yeah, like the songs I was listening to last night kind of threw me off. I, I well, never really heard people. No, it's just like, like I've never heard people deconstruct like wrestling songs and like make them like legit. Like I, I think I sent you like the whole little playlist. I don't know. If you yeah, that, you know? I I got the email for the whole playlist, so I went and I actually checked out a bunch of them. Uh, some of them. I could download some of them. He had locked. I tried to see if I could get a hold of that whole entire two-hour blend mix he had together already, but uh, it wouldn't let me do it, so I guess I can only hack so much now. Uh, can't hack like I used to. But Shout I mean, he got some like, just to work, though. Did you get it? The Hulk Hogan one had me going, though. It, it did. I think part of that I is because n- it's Hulk Hogan, and that usually has us going anyway. So. Right, but I've never heard nobody play real American like that with a funky little rap beat behind it. It was rather dope. Well, you know, if you would have told me, you know, really that's the direction you want to go, I could have just went on ahead and loaded, you know, a few more of those as the music for tonight. But we'll see. Um, no, I just, I was just like, I was just up listening to shit on Facebook. I was like, hey yeah, man, talking like this because I started putting them on Facebook. I was like, yeah, niggas, niggas like this. Yeah. But Hopefully anyway, we get a special return from Mimi tonight, because you know she's been missing lately. Yeah, but the way Mimi talking, I don't think anybody's gonna understand her. She that wasted? No, nah, she's not drunk. She just oh. she. Uh, for those who don't know, Mimi has been talking about getting braces for a while, and I guess the first step in getting braces is giving her a retainer. Well, you don't have to keep the retainer in, if I'm not mistaken. Well, I well, she just got it, so I guess it's a certain amount of time you're supposed to wear it before you can freelance with it. Yeah, I guess. I don't, I, I've never had a retainer, but she talks a little less now, so. <laughs> so. Yeah, so she does talk slightly weird, so. Well, we we need this on air then. Just for the simple fact, because she always slanders me, so I need her to call in. I promise not to <laughs> slander her. I promise not to slander her, but I still want to hear this. I think you're lying, Tom. I said I promise not to slander her. See, because you know Mimi vicious, so. So, um. Uh... Let me see. We got money in the bank this weekend. Levy's first birthday is this weekend. Oh, that's going to be so, I don't know what to expect, Doug. Like, literally, it's her first birthday. Uh, to me, it's it's just funny because when we started Tone Deaf Radio, it started off as a joke that I had a love child on the side. And by that October, so remember, people, we started in April. So by October, Teresa was really pregnant. So at this point in time, we gave up on this elaborate story we were going to create, only to have it happen for real. <laughs> yes, so, ladies and gentlemen, Tone has a real life baby. If you have not followed Tone Deaf Radio on IG, or if you have not followed Mr. Tone Deaf, well, technically, if you follow Mr. Tone Deaf, it's going to be mostly her anyway. So if you want to see this cute, chunky cheek thigh, ham hock in a onesie, as Mimi calls her, and see how she looks, definitely make sure you follow me on IG at Mr. Tone Deaf, and you will see all the epicness. But this will be the first time that the Baby Terror Gang will all be together at one time. <laughs> In public. BPG? BPG? <laughs> baby terror guy. guy. Uh, you know what, bro? You should bring your little sister. I mean, even though she ain't going to understand what's going on, though, you still should bring her. Uh, when is all this happening? 
10 a.m. on Saturday. <laughs> I have no control over why it's so early in the morning. I think either A, Trixie got a major discount for doing that early, or B, she just want to get this shit over with as soon as possible. I think it's a little bit of A, a little bit of B. So wait, where the hell are you going at 10 a.m. in the morning? The Chuck E. Cheese on the south side. Who is woke at 10 a.m. in the morning? Exactly. But like me and Mimi was talking about it, less likely to have the ignorant niggers come in and fuck shit up. You see what I'm saying? I believe Not- I have to work that day. So how do you take my time continue? If I got a late second shift on Saturday, then I can make if you got a late second shit, bro, I personally will drop you off at work if you come. Mimi already said she bringing jelly beans. Uh, Bree slash Monte already said that they bring in Jamila. So, I mean, three-fourths of the Baby Terror gang is going to be in the building regardless. So this ought to be interesting. I feel bad for Chuck more than anybody. I feel bad for the poor schmuck who's going to be opening Chuck E. Cheese at 30 in the morning. Well, that just means we got the very first seating. <laughs> right. Get in, we get out. Of, the very first batch of pizza, which means it should be good, because I give yeah. by fucking by four thirty, they don't give a fuck anymore. You get the fresh as a fresh. You know what I'm saying? Prep table done already. Niggas just waiting for them doors to come open. Had them pizzas flying out. We got a full sheet cake, a full princess sheet cake. So it Bro, ain't it's gonna be too no more. Who's eating cake at 10 in the morning? Fam, it's a birthday party. Once again, like I said, I have no control over why she made it that early in the morning. Okay? Logically y'all speaking. Trying to, so y'all trying to have the BPG hype all day. I guess so. Plus, it opens the door for people to go do other stuff for the rest of the day. You know, it's Saturday, people. Don't Let's be honest. Nobody really wants to be in Chuck E. Cheese at 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay? Hey, Let's I'm be honest. Better than, better than being at Pigeon Sales. True. But you're going to work. So you're going to make money, not spend money. I don't spend money at Chuck E. Cheese. But it's not all about that. We actually was going to do a barbecue at the house. But due to the fact that, number one, niggers over here don't know how to act. They really don't. And the fact hey. that... We got money in the bank coming up the very next day, and Mr. Young Fresh's birthday is coming up later. I would rather spend money in regards to enjoying myself at these other two events instead of spending tons of money on food to feed other people who sometimes are inconsiderate. So, yeah. I think most black people are inconsiderate. Yeah, but... Come this weekend, come Monday at the latest, people, you will see tons of photos posted either on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, of all of our events this weekend. So definitely make sure you follow Tone Deaf Radio and what we're going to be doing this weekend because it's going to be epic. We got baby birthday parties. We got wrestling. Might even have titty bars. Don't know yet. We won't tell you, but you just got to be on the lookout for that. Well, I was told that Tuesday I am not in charge of any events that's going on. I am just to show up. Then that is what you do, sir. That is what you do. (laughs) All right. So before we get into the wrestling, we're going to go ahead and play some local Milwaukee music. Now, me and Juan, we don't normally support local Milwaukee music as much as we should. Or as some of the other shows on Tone Deaf Radio have done in the past, where they literally dedicated their whole show to Milwaukee. We see where that show is now. But in the archives. <laughs> in the archives. Which can be found on ToneDevRadio.com. Make sure you check out that website. Get everything Tone Deaf Radio. Hell, you can even get past episodes of this show. Some of them I don't suggest you listen to. But other ones pretty interesting. Actually, sometimes, bro, I don't even think people need to listen to past episodes of our show, period. We did, but sometimes we just, we had no fucking chill back in the days, dude. We didn't. We've all matured now, but still, we had no fucking chill. All right. We're going to go ahead and play um, 
this cut by Pharaoh Mac and DMT. Uh, apparently, these cats once used to live in Milwaukee, and they moved, and then they came back, and now they want to support Milwaukee again, which is typical Milwaukee attitude. But I actually like this song. So, Fresh, we're going to go ahead and play this cut, and we're going to have What Does Fresh Think About New Music Today. All right? If we play this, we'll be right back, people. Whoever would have thought I would travel halfway around the planet in search of my destiny, only to find it in the very place where my journey began. See, this mecca I set off to discover ended up being hidden right in the city I grew up in as a boy. My father told me the day that he died that I could continue playing the supporting role in some other city's drama, or I could star as the lead in the place I call home. It was all about choice, and if I so desired, I could leave a dent in this universe. Sometimes there are moments in life when God winks at you, and this was one of them. Taking the leap of faith and praying the net would appear, I did the thing that was hard to do and believe the power would come. By returning to my roots, I became the prodigal son. Let me see them three fingers high. Living the dialect, last of a dying breed. Maximizing every opportunity I get to see. Grinding around the clock, working, earning every dollar. Flipping these highs with the spirit of a blue collar. Making no promises, but hearing like a pharmacist. I end my ex, be loud in the words, be my accomplishments. I'm dream drifting, singing no opposition. Rocking my walkie home while kicking it with the mix. Lord, see why I put that power that strength I prayed it to give me more. Refusing to be your number, I'm nice to make a flow. Far from full forgotten, I've got to can't ignore. You know why there's a point, I grant you this anointing. History in the making, blessings of inspiration, it's true. That bottom we stand, thinking outside of our differences, thinking potential we can. Never forgetting our legacy, we pray to God as you land. Right here back in our hearts, your boss is saving his hand. Cause it's blue and yellow that we wave is more than the flag. Cause blue and yellow is our legacy, you know what we can. I'll be putting in work, I'll probably be putting in work. I'll probably be putting in work, who said he putting in work? We've been eyeing that finish line, coming back where it started first. It's green on the other side, but the love is for what it's worth. We're walking home. Ladies and gentlemen, now is the time to live your full potential in the city you call home. Because home is where your heart is, and where your heart is is where your full potential lives. So stand up for yourself and your dreams and live big and tell everybody what you got to do. Because I know what I got to do. Milwaukee, stand up. We got work to do. Let's go, go, go. Bro, bro, yo, the video's over with. What are you talking about? I got work to do. You see the whole floor? Come on, man. You're in my way. Whoa, come on, come on. All right, dog. So what do you think about that, bro? I like that beat, though. Oh, uh, left from here? Yeah, bro. The whole song was about Milwaukee. Matter of fact, if you go on and actually check out the video, which I'm going to probably end up adding to uh, Tone Deaf Radio's video section soon, they actually got a tight-ass uh, Mecca t-shirt. Like, literally, it has, like, the Mecca Arena logo that says Milwaukee. That yeah, I fucks with that. And then to what the city. No doubt. Support, support no the troops. Support the troops. The troops don't like really Huey. be. The troops. I like be. Huey Freeman. Hey, look, Riley said that Huey did support the troops. I thought that I would just be a little more supportive. Well, I mean, yeah. Anyway. Alright. Alright. That's what I'm saying. Can't ask too much. I'm just saying. I like that song. It's different. You know, it's not. Niggas trying to take over the globe, or I'm trying to be the realest nigga out. Shit, it's literally just a damn and, decent and song. I think, I think we do, like, you know, a lot of people say that we don't play Milwaukee music. I think we do play Milwaukee music. We just play selective Milwaukee music because we play what we like 
because this is my show. Well, so, and you know what? Not that I don't. And that's how it's it not that I don't be. play Milwaukee music. I just play what I like. Right, and honestly, and no disrespect, that's how it should be. We're not a radio station that gets paid endorsements from artists or record labels. So if you ain't paying me to play your shit and I play it, I'm only playing it because I like it, okay? And I have the right to do that. So if you don't make it on the Deathly Fresh Show or you don't make it on Sound Dropping, maybe it's not what you like. Maybe well, you should pay me. Pay That's well, what you're going to do, sir. I'm definitely. Maybe you should pay me. Yeah. I but there is one Milwaukee artist that I do like in particular. He's been making a lot of big noise. Everybody's talking about the. And you already know about Tom. Talking about Pizzle. Uh, yeah. So, we got to get Pizzle on the show one time again. You know what we got to do? Just hit him up and tell him to come on in. Right. I, 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 make, I make that happen. Well, uh, find out. He might have a new project coming out. Because I know... Right. Uh, he got some major media attention with the new track, Kill One. He was on Channel 6 News. I was like, oh yeah, Pizzle made it. And right. The news people were talking about Pizzle. He's made it. Nigga, we made it. need to get out of the sound bite. Uh, well, I'm working on sound bites as we speak. I'm, I've been very selective about sound bites I add. Because we have sound bites on the boards we don't never even use. So it's kind of like, I'm not going to put something on here. We're not going to use it. Secondly, because of your situation with Noah locking the computer. <laughs> uh, well, you know, you know, my little sister's an IT genius. She always talks about she want to go to school for culinary. She needs to go to school for computers because she's a goddamn wizard. She's unlocked the computer. Every, she's unlocked the computer and reset it. Yeah. Damn. Shout out to Jazz. <laughs> Shout out to Jazz for being able to hack America, because that's basically what she do. She can hack into anything she want to. Right. Baby genius. Right. Um, what was I going to say? We are now going remember. to talk about wrestling. Wrestling? Wrestling. I, no, I think we should start with LeBron first, because you know what? the wrong topic, and we may not cover one thing, so... I think if we talk about LeBron, we'll gradually go into wrestling because it is this Sunday. Well, the DP or the DPC niggas want to actually kind of chime in on that. So I'm trying to give them time to actually join us before we talked about, you know, the LeBron situation. But meanwhile, due to the fact that society... It is an open topic, though, and LeBron is not the only person that is on the move. Like, right. A lot of people want to know where LeBron is going to go, but my big question that I have, I want to know where Melo is going to go. And you know what? I strongly think that where Melo goes is solely based on where LeBron goes. Because everybody wants to sit here and say, oh, LeBron and Melo, they're going to you know, be together. But if I'm not mistaken, and, and this is just me, you know, I've been watching basketball for a while, so don't they play the exact same position? They do. and that w- and that was my thing because a lot of people were saying that that it's a possibility that they both can end up in Houston. Now we all know that LeBron is an all around player, so even if they did end up in Houston, LeBron could easily play the four, or he could play the two. Right, but, but he's more he's devastating the million, at the three. But here's the million dollar question. But I mean, even though he's more devastating at the three, he'd be like he would be good for Melo if he played the two. Because LeBron is more of a, uh, a facilitator than Melo. LeBron could pass and set Melo up. Right. So Melo wouldn't have to struggle so much for the shot because LeBron is well, such a Well, see, that's the problem. Well, and, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm an avid like, New York fan. And I think James Harden becomes the odd man out if you sign Melo and Bron. Because right. I don't think and they're going to keep him. And that's my thing, though. I don't think that they're going to – if Houston – if Houston is trying to make this run that they've been trying to make, okay – they are going to take one or the other. They're not going to take both. Most people are going to probably go with LeBron because he's the all-around total package. Okay, He's the best option for the scheme of things that Houston is currently looking at right now. So you already have a great shooting guard. You already have, supposedly, until he proves it to me, I won't believe this, the best center in the game right now. 
Okay? Let's not forget you got Jeremy Lin running that point. So you have everything already there you need. Putting LeBron into the picture is the final say so. Not like Melo. Now don't get me wrong. With Jeremy Lin running point, getting Melo the ball is definitely going to be a lot easier because that's basically what Jeremy does. He feeds, okay? He feeds like crazy, all right? Now, my personal opinion, okay, he needs to go to Chicago. But if he go to Chicago, I feel that, all right, now Chicago may be a good place. But they don't have anybody. If you go to Chicago, it's New York all over again because we already know. Well, this is my. I don't think Derrick Rose will ever be the same again. He's not, but that's why you need a better scorer. If you give him a decent scorer, you give him Melo. Melo can take the brunt of the work. Therefore, D Rose doesn't need to go out there and break his neck to be that dude. Okay, he doesn't have to be that anymore. Why? Because now Carmelo's that dude. Okay, he is. Yeah, okay, I think obviously all these places would like would welcome Melo with open arms, but then at the end of the day, you got to look at how Melo feels. Is Melo st- okay? Melo is what ten years deep. Him and Brian, same time, yeah. same draft yep. class. Same time, same draft now, class. We have to think like: Is Melo playing just to be? Is is Melo playing for the love of the game, or is Melo at the point in his career where he's like, okay? I've been getting, you know, I've been getting, you know, to the playoffs, but I'm not making it anywhere. So is he playing for the love or is he does he want that ring now? Fam, he wants that ring now. Think about it, bro. Melo and LeBron hit the scene at the exact same time. Like literally they were the two biggest talks. It was the fact that Melo dominated the NCAA. He literally was supposed to have it came out as that dude in the NBA. All of a sudden, this little high school dude stole the show. Like, LeBron was getting big, huge endorsement, contract deals, notoriety, everything at 17 years old. Meanwhile, Carmelo's over here in upper New York busting his ass trying to make Syracuse the best damn thing to ever happen to the East Coast. Okay? I said trying. All right. But well, they won a national title. They won, right. a, they won a national title. They won a national title. So that's why everybody was looking at Melo. Then you get picked up by the New York, You get picked up by Denver. Okay? He was supposed to make a big turnaround for Denver. Denver hadn't been good since the Kimbe put Seattle out as an eighth seed. Okay? Last time you ever heard Damn. a big noise on the Denver. It's true. Damn, wasn't Jalen Rose on that team? Right. That was the last time sure. Denver had ever made any noise that people, you know, gave some recognition. Now, they had a nice little squad built around Melo's rookie year, so it wasn't a bad thing, but he just had so much potential, and he just never he got there. To the playoffs he took his team to the he playoffs his rookie year. He did. That's what yeah. I'm saying. It never manifested. Denver, Denver so, went to the, they, they gave Melo good pieces, but... I don't think the pieces jailed around Melo because everybody that everybody that gave him was more likely an individual star. Like I think Chauncey Billups was probably like the only real team player Melo right. had. Like you brought Allen Iverson in. I didn't really see that working. That Iverson was more had, so to get I that was more so to get Iverson out of his situation. That's my honest opinion. I, Iverson, Iverson wasn't there to change the game. In the game of basketball today and he's not even playing the game no more. Right, he still people still talking about him though. You can't people still talking about him. They are. I mean, take into consideration, I mean, dog. Like my fault, my mind went blank. I mean, well, coming out that good week, team in Denver, but yeah, I, I never seen him going nowhere. I mean, he did what he could do for Denver. I thought New York would have been a better situation. Amari really I mean, didn't. I, I feel like New York didn't prosper because Amari didn't deliver the way right. we thought Amari yeah, would I'm not even going to talk about didn't. dogs. Right. I mean, we but, thought we were going to get the Amari from Phoenix when he got to New York, and that just wasn't what we got. Because they gave him all that money, and it was guaranteed. Okay, take into consideration, when you look when you look back at, at Melo and LeBron's draft class, all right? LeBron went first, of course, all right? 
You had these are all the people that came out that draft class. LeBron came out that draft class. Melo came out that draft class. Bosch came out that draft class. Dwayne came out that that draft class. Those are four of the top five picks. One of these four don't have something that the other three have. Now, yeah, they had to get together to do it, but there's one nigga in this group that don't have a fucking ring. So, yeah, Melo wants a ring, dog. I mean... And you know, and you know what's crazy? I think Melo kind of... Melo slid a pick. Detroit passed yeah, on did. Melo. Right, Detroit passed on Melo. He got picked third. He right. got picked Detroit third. Pa- Detroit passed on Melo, and then Bosch went. Bosch went to Toronto. Melo went to Denver, and... The big tall, I don't know if he's Russian, but white guy. He went second because he went to Denver. Yeah, no, wait a minute. Yeah, he went second because he went to Detroit. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I have to remember because, like, who was the second pick? (laughs) Uh, Then you had Kamen that went six. You had Heinrich that went seven. Chicago took, I mean, not Chicago, Milwaukee took TJ Ford. Which I thought T.J. Ford was a good pick from Milwaukee. He was. He was. He was. We took T.J. Ford. Uh, Lou Rick now got picked up up on your computer. Yeah, I'm on my computer right now. I'm running. Josh Howard came out that same year. Mo Williams came out that same year. It was Darko Milic. Milic. I can't say that. Darko Milic. Yeah. Yeah, That's who who went before Melo. Detroit took Darko Milic over Melo. So I just want you to understand, people, that Detroit <laughs> took this guy. But in Detroit defense, though, at that time, um, they needed a big man. So it's I would have went with I would have went with Chris Kane. I mean, but it's a lot of draft. It's a lot of draft stories like that. Like I wonder. I often think I like I don't. Like, I, I think he's still been a great player. But like, do you think Kevin Durant would have taken control of a Portland team? the way he's taking control of the Thunder, or even when he was in Seattle. I say yes. You want to know why? Because Greg, Greg Oden went before him, but you see what happened to Greg Oden. I say yes because he here's, the, here's the reason why. Kevin Durant literally is a loyal nigga, okay? He, when you pack your mama up to move to where you hoop at just so you have no reason to be distracted, that's going to be a loyal nigga. So whoever took Kevin Durant, I think Kevin Durant would have did what Kevin Durant needed to do to be great. That's one of those situations where if you look at Kevin Durant and you look at how KD stays loyal to Oklahoma, okay? Imagine had we here in Milwaukee got a KD, okay? Because our biggest issue here in Milwaukee is niggas won't stay loyal here. And the ones who do stay loyal is the ones we don't even fucking need anyway. Okay? But even though Kevin Durant is a loyal person, I do believe that all the talks that we are having about LeBron and how, we, and how most people feel that LeBron sold out and changed up and, you know, it was bad guy. Even, I believe we're going to have that same talk with Kevin, about Kevin Durant. It's going to get to a point in time where Kevin Durant is going to look at the team and be like, okay, I've been here since day one, and you're not providing me with the pieces I need to get you a championship. Okay, you, you, he, I got Russell. I got Russell. That's my Robin. I'm Batman. I got your backup, but you know I need more, and and I don't think Oklahoma's gonna give him more. Kevin Durant's not gonna get a ring unless he leaves. All BS aside, all BS aside, Durant had his squad when he had James Harden in them. Durant had. A, Durant had a squad already. I'm not – he did. If they would have kept – all they had to do – I'll be honest with you. All they had to do was keep Harding happy. Because basically Harding just wanted to be a little bit more in the offense. Okay? He just wanted a little bit more role in the offense. They didn't want to give James Harding that. Had they gave James Harding a little bit more in the offense, I don't think James Harding would have left. You had the pieces there. It literally was still there for the next two years. You were just missing James Hardy. Now Oklahoma needs another small forward that can take over. Believe it or not, and this is my opinion, 
Ray Allen moving over there would be a good fit because all you need is somebody to score. Wade, if he's done in Miami, could get that one last hoorah run with Durant over there. You know, you got the opportunities. You got them capabilities. All they need is a good small forward. D. Wade ain't played real basketball in four years. All, no, no, he, but you don't need to. LeBron, Here's the thing. The way LeBron when LeBron got Miami, there, he didn't have to. Right. So I don't think I think if he goes to Oklahoma knowing that Kevin is willing to take the last shot and, you know, take the first shot, he's gonna get lazy. He's not gonna put no effort. I think the way he's lazy. That's the point Man. blank period. He ain't played no real basketball since LeBron came to Miami. Fam, I'm sitting here looking at some of the past draft picks, and I'm, it's more so – it's not that anything that was done at the time was bad because, you know, every pick was always picked based on what they need. But when I go back and I look, bro, we pick Andrew Bogut over Danny Granger. Danny Granger was a 17th pick, dog. We need a big man. I know. That's what I'm saying. Not looking back and saying these are bad picks because we did what we had to do at the time. But, fam, we pick Andrew Bogut over Danny Granger, dog. Over Chris Paul. Over Deron Williams. <laughs> over Andrew Bynum. Hell, we could have took Bynum if we really needed a big man. Over David nah, Lee, dog. Bogut was a good fit. He was just injury prone. He, and that's why I'm upset about the situation. Because he was a good fit. He did give us the defense we needed. He just wasn't that, you know, that reliable. Hell, shit, we could have had Monte Ellis. Like, I didn't know Monte Ellis didn't go into the second round. Damn. We ended up with Monte Ellis, and that got us nowhere. Because at that point in time, he was basically like, I don't want to be here. When you live, when you go to California or to New York or Florida or Texas, once you go to them places, you don't want to go play in any of these other little small areas because the notoriety, the fame, the money, you don't get that here. Coming from Golden State, bro, you still basically in L.A. You leaving L.A., L.A., bro, to go play in some backwater reserve uh, niggas who ran away from Chicago because it was too real for them ass city called Milwaukee. <laughs> okay? Like, I really to this day don't understand how we even had a basketball team to begin with knowing you get more money in Chicago. I think the 80s is the only reason why we still got a team. Because the squad in the 80s is probably the best squad Milwaukee has ever had, hands down. First pick. Well, that was the year Brandon Roy and uh, Rudy Gay bought out for rookie of the year. Damn, Rondo went 21st. What pick did Milwaukee have that year for us to pass up Rondo? You know what? I have come to the realization that Milwaukee just don't know how to pick shit. We don't. We don't. We could have took Paul Millsap. (laughs) <laughs> ah, well, I don't know where this nigga went to He just does this I hate when he does this So we're going to go ahead and play another song From another Milwaukee native This is from Tay Butler This particular cut is actually called Cuban Lynx Dubbed after the actual song by um, Raekwon the chef himself So check it out people Tell me what you think Another commercial yeah. <laughs> I, I grew 
grew up on Wu-Tang, AZ, reasonable JC, name my son Nas, cause that Illmatic raised me, moms used to send me to the store for a pastry, I came back and watched Kane bleed all over Stacy. I'm tutored by the legends, now I'm in the bracket with the veterans, going head to head in the lectures, utilize connections, bars free the arteries like suicide injections, if you spit as hard as me, I'm losing my erections. Saw these pussies hold notes. Both ties, leather skirts, man bags, overcoats. Used to get comatose, now it's high fructose. All you gotta do to be a boss is rock suit coat. Who cares, may a back though. Back die, gone so much I played a back though. Back so much I almost forgot what I'm back for. Camo, black phones, trapping out that bando. Black Rambo, came back from the rack, now I'm serving rap Van Gogh. Used to watch Sam blow, now we watch Yola shoot the dead red snappers with the Lambo. Mayor going hard like hands bro, swear I got fans bro. Held it down till I came out, like hand soap. Shield at your hand soap, savvy YOG, embrace wisdom, replace system. Custom made cotton with the raised hey, yo Tay, they gotta pay respect. Yeah, I rap, but I support like the baby's neck. Navy Ava Rex Files get chopped to the greatest depth. Swing nasty as a razor neck. She got the point like a razor the neck. They peep the grandeur of the flow and say I may be next. Got the poison vest, the corduroy, mash the mesh. Nostalgic like the Polaroid, remind you of the best. We the catalyst, this rhymes is cataclysmic. Ashy hands brush the biscuit toe. I'm all about business, though. Three M silkies, I rock them just for show. Uh, grab the fifth the henny, gotta sip it slow. The shit is gold, rail hit us with a winner, bro. We on the eighth floor, spitting nonsense. Ain't no coincidence, we live on process. We live in prospects, Cuban Lincoln's God said they calling me the black Van Keith. The quad cut like a cannabis leaf. Pull ups with the plate on my knees, it takes time. Shove iron inside of a Meg Ryan, defiant. They say we did it with the first, so the second time around, we exact told they eyelids. Mm. Throw pellets, no edits, you get beheaded with my ten toes down, no credit, poor etiquette. When you dealing with us, I have you riding on the back of the bus with no leverage. That was Tay Butler and Has Solo with uh, Cuban Links. I actually fuck with that because the song of the same name by Raekwon and Ghostface used to get heavy rotation in my car back in the days. Speaking of cars, I drove around today, Doug, with the top down. It's quite interesting. Stop, niggas driving the tops. <laughs> it ain't even, bro, I mean, okay. Now, me personally, I'm not used to riding around in a convertible. But if you got a convertible, people, you got to convert it, right? Convertible's going to convert. That's what they do, right? 80 on the freeway with the top down. And, bro, it feels like a roller coaster when you when you drive like that. It does. Plus, the same freeway that I happen to be on is the same freeway I had my accident. Accident. Two weeks ago, so I was still kind of nervous looking around for any random deers running out in the middle of the street because I don't want to be in a convertible and the fucker flips because there is no way you are not going to die in that. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. But more on this NBA news. As much as we sitting here talking about Milwaukee, here in Milwaukee, the biggest news when it comes to the NBA is the fact that we have the number two pick. All right. Currently, right now, as of yesterday, it's basically be, been uh, said by the new team co-owner, Mark Lazarus, that he indicated Monday that it's either down to Jabari Parker or Andrew Wiggins in regards to who they're going to make their second pick. Now, for those of you who are actually watch NBA and actually care about other teams but your own team, unless the Bucks is your own team, you will know that the Milwaukee Bucks had the worst record last year. Like 10 and 60 seconds. See, 67. Okay? Horrible. We needed mad hope. Okay? Now, one of the best things that could ever happen to the Bucks was for the simple fact that Herb Cole fucking sold it. Okay? Can ask for a better gift, people. Let do, let it go. Okay. Now, at the same time, though, Herb Cole was smart. He put a provision into the contract that basically has the Bucks staying here. Okay. End of the story. They're not going nowhere. 
They got to stay here for at least five years minimum. And during this time, he's going to basically build a contender team. Uh, a lot of people are saying he's going to take this five years to build a great team, to use it to market to other uh, franchises to be able to want to take their the bucks where they go. Now, me personally, as an avid fan of basketball, don't get me wrong, I do not go to basketball games as much as I used to back in the days. But with my child and her love for basketball, because she gets geek when I play 2K, I would want to take her to an actual Bucks game. Can't do that if you take the fucking team from me. Nobody wants to drive two and a half hours to see the Bulls play. If you ain't from well, Chicago. That, that may be our fate because, if for one, if we don't have a new stadium by 2017, or is it 2017 or 2018? It's 2018. Yeah, well, if it's not done by 2018, the NBA is going to buy the team back. And they're gonna move the bucks to Seattle. But at the same well, they're time, gonna, they're the gonna new, move the team to Seattle. But the new ownership group, so these guys that own the Bucks now, they're also looking for uh, for public financing to help build the, the new arena. Um, they haven't said how much they need, but basically they're saying it's gonna cost somewhere close to three hundred fifty to four million dollars for a new arena. Now my thing is this: if you have a good season. Okay, because this season banks everything. If you have a new season, you can get the endorsements. A lot of endorsements are going to come just off the strength of your building a new facility. So now we can dedicate or start working towards or putting stuff that needs to be put towards building this particular arena. It can happen. It can be done. Okay, it can definitely be done. It's how much money are they going to put in and how much money they need to put in. Now, $100 million is not – I mean, 350 to $400 million is not really that much because the two guys that own the team, they've already gone ahead and said they're going to put $100 mil in. Part of Herb Cole's deal is another $100 mil. So literally all you got to do is come up with the other half, and the stadium is there. That's not the issue. issue is once you build this grand, luxurious stadium, can you get people to come sit in it? Because after about the first 20 games, when everybody comes out to see what the new stadium looks like, your ticket holders who want to have those exclusive floor tickets do all what they got to do, then what? We ain't got nobody worth seeing. Ain't nobody going to come. Prime example, two years ago when we made it to the playoffs, niggas didn't come to the playoffs to see the Bucks. They came to see the Heat. How does that f- – dude, as, as a fucking player, how does that fucking feel – where your crowd cheers more for the other team than you. Like, nobody wants that. That's mad disrespectful. Like, I wouldn't want to play, even if I had a chance to steal the playoffs, okay? Why would I want to win for a team that didn't even cheer for us to to beat the defending champion? You just gave up on us, and the game hadn't even started. Like, Milwaukee wants to have their Mighty Duck moment. (laughs) I wouldn't mind turning on the TV and seeing the underdogs win. But, so, in your opinion, Fresh, who do you think we should take? Should we go for Jabari Parker out of Duke, or should we go for Andrew Wiggins out of Kansas City? I believe Jabari Parker said he, he wouldn't mind. One of them said they wouldn't mind playing in Milwaukee. Jabari definitely the, said he wouldn't mind being here. Somebody and actually that's the guy we said, need to yeah, and somebody actually said that Jabari actually fucked up his tryout with Cleveland to increase his his possibilities of playing for uh for Milwaukee. That's what I heard. Now Cleveland could be dicks and actually use picking Jabari Parker as a trade method. They might not want to keep him at all. They might want to use him to see what they can get out of Milwaukee. Which is nothing because we don't have anybody to give us. Well, you never know. They might get future draft picks out of us. Because you got to remember, this is a team also who's looking to rebuild as well, too. So definitely rebuilding and taking advantage of this could help out. Now, my whole thing is, okay, You have a possibility of LeBron coming home. Okay? It's a possibility. It's it's a small possibility, but it's a possibility. Okay? 
LeBron could come home. LeBron could come back to Cleveland and close out his career. He has a nice little squad that's kind of there, so maybe one or two people more, and you got yourself a contender squad again. Got to remember, LeBron's matured a little bit now. Okay, he's he's developed himself. He has more of a, a all around game play. He knows how to be a leader, and he can play a little backup if he has to. So he definitely wouldn't be wrong if he came back to Cleveland. Will he come back to Cleveland? Who knows? Okay, um, you got Kyrie Irving. Okay, you got Anthony Bennett. You know, you got still got Virgil. Okay. Uh, so they got a nice little squad that can work with them in regards to getting a contendership. Honestly, if you got Bennett, you really don't need Parker. I could be wrong, but in my opinion, I don't see Cleveland picking up Parker at all anyway. Well, then, then there's also there's also a rumor going around. I don't know how true it is. Uh, there's supposedly Deion Waiters is on the table. So there's a possibility that he could be shipped out. And okay. there's been talks. You know what? I said, okay. Yeah, there's also been talks about Cleveland trading their first round pick in order to gain Kevin Love. Now, honestly, that's not a bad move. Okay? Because that does benefit both uh, Minnesota and uh, Cleveland in this particular setup because Minnesota got a 13th pick, okay? So you get a first and a 13th pick out that year, you can actually make some major moves. Second of all, we all know that Minnesota literally produces great forwards but don't have a great team to give them. Like, prime example, Kevin Garnett. Great pick out of Kevin Garnett. Kevin Garnett didn't actually become the great player he needed to be till he got the fuck out of Minnesota. I think the same thing with Kevin Love, too. I mean, Love got a nice little squad with Rubio, Matabutu, as a good supporting cast. You got Bullinger. Uh, you got Corey Brewer. But I don't see Minnesota being a contender anytime soon. But, see, but the, and then that's the case. Though. But, like, when Kevin Garnett was in Minnesota, they, they, were, they were legit threatening the West as well as Portland, and then, you know, L.A. was the powerhouse, and San Antonio has been there for the last 10, 12 years. San Antonio ain't going nowhere. They're the only right, NBA been there team that still plays. They're the only NBA team that still play NBA ball. <laughs> okay? They, yeah, they play old man basketball for real. They play old man but, basketball, hey. and old man basketball this year proved to you that is how you get a ring. And they was pissed off at Miami from last year. So. But I don't know, bro. Like, the Kevin Love move to Cleveland would be a good move. I would not be against that move. But if you do that move, who do you go for then? You have the first-round pick. You don't want to wastefully just grab somebody just because you first. Like the kid that, you know, walked into the candy store as soon as it opened and someone gave you a $20 bill. Like, you don't just get whatever you can get just to be getting it. You got to be strategic about this shit. I'm just saying. Fuck they couch. As much as Minnesota trading off Kevin Love to do this, I think even if they get the first round pick, it's not going to benefit them. I think literally it's going to go to waste if they do that. Well, Apparently well, the DPC everyone. got drunk. Because they were supposed to be you know joining what? us. I said, apparently the DPC must have gotten drunk. Because they were supposed to be joining us, and they never made it here. So, as we continue on. I just say, what, whatever happens, it's going to be a great summer this July. Because, like, man, that's when free agency starts. So, yeah. All right. Well, apparently another N.O. Tukumbe. I don't know how to say dude name. The dude who plays for the Bucks. Apparently, his older brother is actually going in the draft this year. <laughs> so, this ought to be interesting because 
we here at Milwaukee could barely say the damn name, let alone going to say his name twice because of his brother. But this ought to be interesting because if we get both of them, I'm leaving. Oh. Where would you go, Tone? Are you going to relocate? I don't know, man. I can go to Toronto. I still get NBA basketball, and I live in Canada, and I get free health care. Canadian bacon. Eh, it's just ham. And <laughs> also, you would get to cheer for the starting point guard who is a Milwaukee native. True. True. The white True. bucks or bikes. I would say so. Name. So the bucks and have you know the what? number. I did not. And I did not know that he was in NBA 2K14. Did not know he made the game. Oh, I don't know the rookies made the game. If they didn't make the game, they got added sometime during that first initial update. Speaking of NBA 2K, so I have been playing my My Player mode literally since the game came out, people. Okay? So I decided to go ahead and say, you know what? Let me fuck with this association. I haven't done an association in a long time. Now, the cool thing I like about the association is, you know how you get these players that you only had the team for a year, and you basically make them ball out of control, and the first thing they want to do is go test themselves in free agency? So, a few years back, like maybe five or six to be exact, I figured out there's a trick to the association mode, where you can literally go and manually extend somebody's contract. Like, you can adjust their contract in their edit player mode. So this whole entire, oh, I'm just going to wait till my contract expire, no, bitch, no, you won't. I am trying to build a franchise here, <laughs> okay? So, as always, in association mode, not to fuck with the regular roster, I create players, and I put them in the association and watch them flourish. So this year, in my yeah, hopes to take do, the worst like, team. Yeah. Yeah, like when I play association mode, I'll go through the first year with the regular roster, and then when it like the end of the season, I create yeah. a bunch of players, and then I let them get drafted. Right. Well, this year, I kind of cheated and put all my created players on the Bucks. Okay? This one wants to be a little bit more promising. Um, so my four players all got on the Bucks. Not only did they all get on the Bucks, they all started. Fired the Bucks coach, fired the assistant coach, fired the trainer, fired the NBA scout team, and literally drafted a whole new squad. Okay? Shipped out so many players, made so many major changes that the following year, the Bucks end up going like only losing three games the whole season. Okay? Come All-Star game, right, the dunk contest was my four created players. <laughs> like, they were the dunk contest. Now, now, here's the thing. The dunk contest irritates the fuck out of me, bro, because they do simple dunks and be scoring 80s. And then you go to do, you know, a nice little difficult elaborate dunk you know, like I go do the East Bay Funk, for an example. You, you guarantee to get a nice row out of somebody if you pull that off, right? I get a 60, right. 62. Like, you, the crowd's going crazy. The bench is talking about the awesomeness of that dunk. You get all this discipline and hoorah about it, and you only get a 62. Meanwhile, the nigga who come behind you, all he does is do a bounce pad, one-handed dunk, and he gets an 82. I hate the dunk contest on this game. I hated it last year, and they literally gave me the same thing, and I still hate it. Because that's the only achievement that I can't seem to unlock is to fucking win all three events at the All Star con at the All Star game. Because I can't fucking win the dunk cast. It sucks. But one, going back to the story, one of the creative players is actually you. Okay. So I created you, my brother, my cousin, and me. You got traded to Minnesota. What? What? The coach traded you to Minnesota. 
He did. I had no control. Like, the tradings, I have no control over. I just let them do what they're going to do. I just extend their contracts. You got traded to Minnesota. But here's the thing. You became an awesome player for Minnesota. You dominate the West in Minnesota. Unfortunately, your supporting cast sucks in Minnesota. <laughs> like, I don't know what they did, but somehow you got traded for Kevin Love. Kevin Love got traded for Amari Stoudemire. Now, Amari Stoudemire is getting a ring this year. Meanwhile, you're sitting in Minnesota. The fuck off. <laughs> Seriously, you are pissed off on your game. It's hilarious, bro. You know what? I'm going to do that right now. Let me pick a team to play with. But uh, still nah. speaking of basketball, go ahead and close this out because we've been talking about, you know, the big three. We haven't talked about L.A., okay? Kobe should retire. <laughs> Well, that's and, not I, and I, I know if A. Marie just heard me say that about Kobe, she will probably have a mental conniption. She but. might, you know what? Hold on now, A. Marie is off. She might have a shit fit because the fact that's her boy. She don't want him going anywhere. But at the exact same time, that might be a true statement that she thinks herself. But here's the thing about L.A. At the current moment in time, there's only three people on L.A.'s roster. Three guaranteed people on L.A.'s roster. Kobe, Nash, and uh, was it Zachary? I guess that's how you say it. They are currently under contract. So basically, L.A. is being rebuilt from scratch as we speak right now. Hold on one moment. We do have a caller who wants to go ahead and join us on air for the Definitely Fresh show. Caller, you're on the air. What do you want to talk about? Uh, good, e- good evening. How are you brothers doing? We're doing fine to yourself. I'm doing awesome, my brother. I want to talk about uh, the new. I want to talk about what LeBron did uh, um, today, and also the new paradigm in sports that is happening, which is also happening in, in, on the planet and on, on, in the world as well. But it's being reflected in sports as well, as it is in everything else. This this change, this paradigm shift. Well, go right ahead then. Yeah. Um, I, I see that LeBron opted out today, and uh, I absolutely loved it, by, by the way. And um, this is a very unique situation that has almost maybe never happened. And I say almost because maybe we have to go back to the early days of free agency. But um, it's never really happened in the, in the modern right now time where a guy could actually – go to a, in the prime of his career, an MVP could, could actually go, go to another city, see, and start over again. And he could actually join another MVP, former MVP, and that's Derrick Rose in Chicago. And, and, and this mobility that, that, uh, LeBron James, this this freedom that we all say we want until it doesn't look like the freedom that we like, then we don't like that freedom. But he is showing all of the youngsters, and he's changing the paradigm and saying, look, if you are a professional athlete and you don't think about sports from a business standpoint first, then you're missing the boat. See, he it was very strategic what he did today. He had until the he had until uh, January 30th, if I'm not mistaken, for yep. he really had to say whether he was going to opt out or not. But he chose now before the draft to give every team to first of all to let everybody know I'm serious about moving. I'm serious about winning. I'm serious about taking my life and doing what in my life what I think I should be doing. See, Which is and true. It's a, that, 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 go ahead. Go ahead, my brother. So yeah. It's amazing. Like, it's amazing that he's done this. Yeah. He, and he knows he's going to take a lot of flack if he leaves Miami. He knows that people are going to, you know, the ego and folk 
is just is just huge, and and the ego can't stand to have light shined on it. So well, like I said, it, most of us believe in, and 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 I remember when he took all that that flack for going to Miami, and many sure. of us forget the fact that Magic Johnson, when he was winning championships in Los Angeles, had big the big three, him, James Worthy, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Right. Larry Bird had the big three down there with him, with him and McHale and Parrish. Or if you want to take Parrish out and put D. Dennis Johnson in. See. Everybody's they, they had their big three. Yeah, everybody had their big three. That's they tend right. to forget that. You think about Chicago. You know, you did at one point that you had uh, Pippen, Jordan, and Dennis Rodman. Hell, even That's the Dirty right. D of Detroit had their big three. That's okay? right. That's you had right. Dumars, right. you had Isaiah, and you had what's the dirty one? Lane Beer. So everybody Lane really Beer, had their right. big three, you know. Um, that's right. But here's the thing about LeBron, and we kind of didn't touch on this too much because we were waiting for our friends to join us, so we was kind of like stuttering around for a while. But to go a little bit more in depth, um, LeBron basically, in so many words, had said being able to have a flexibility as a professional, anyone that would we all would like. I mean, this is in any sport, for a football player, baseball, basketball, to have flexibility and be able to control your future or your present. Currently, I have the position to be able to do that, and that's a lot of time that you're not in control of your future as a professional. So basically, like, like you're pointing out right now, by saying, hey, I'm opting out right now, you basically are making the NBA as a whole pause. Every single idea that you had going into the draft, going into the free agency, and saying, hold up, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, minute. how much money we got over here? Because we can get this, Mm. you know, maybe, maybe, Mm. maybe, maybe we can trade off these two picks and get this dude instead. Or Mm. maybe, okay, maybe let's see where he goes. And we can build around there because there's talk about Houston. There's talk about Chicago. There's even talk about him going back to Cleveland, which is what we were just talking about prior to before. So these three potential locations can either a build for hopes of him coming there or basically build to counteract whatever he decides to do. So, yeah, as a professional, he has really shooken up the NBA. But like you said, most importantly, now you're, opening the floodgates for other professions to kind of do the same thing. I mean, the last time we ever had a player that kind of shook the, the foundation like this was when Brett Favre decided to leave Green Bay. Hmm. Okay? Hmm. Brett Favre said, hey, I'm leaving Green Bay. He didn't say where he was going just yet, but the fact that you had one of the greatest quarterbacks saying, if you want me, come get me. That literally changed the NFL at that moment in time. And LeBron's kind of doing the same thing right now because he is, hands down, the best player in the league. So the best and see, player that, in the and league. That, and, that, and that, my brother, is where the difference is. See, we've never had a, a guy. Imagine if Michael Jordan didn't go to baseball, instead went to another team. Man, at the, Dominique at the prime been, of his career. The prime. Dominique would have did everything prime. in his power to get dude in Atlanta. Guaranteed. Mm. Mm. I could have seen Jordan in a Knicks uniform. No, the Knicks would have won. He probably hated John Stark. I, I could have seen he would, that working. Him and Starks had a respectability on the court, but he wouldn't have gone to New York. Guarantee you, hands no, no. down, he would have went to Atlanta. I'm telling you. Him and Dominique, yes, Atlanta. I, I definitely do believe that LeBron has changed the game, you know, more from the other side of the coin where it's not just – he not just affects what goes on on the court anymore. He's starting to affect what goes on in the boardroom. That's right. And is and that's, and, that's, and that's a unique perspective when you, when you look at it because now it's not – it's not that we're building my team to prepare for whatever LeBron has for us when we get on the court. Now there's a chance where it's like we don't have to prepare for him because he could potentially land on our team. Right. LeBron is currently saying, "Offer me a deal." That's basically what and he's, he's not. 
and, and as much as people give him flack for being a bad guy, like when your contract is up. And it gives you the option, like, that gives you the choice. You don't have to stay where you do not want to stay. Right. See, people are not looking like, at the money side of it because people are not realizing LeBron is actually walking away from about $43 million by opting out. So it's definitely not money. If he stayed for next year, he was guaranteed $20 million. Then he was guaranteed a total of $43 million by the end of the last two years he had, had he not opt out. So, I, you know, with it, LeBron, though, honestly, I don't think it's ever been about money. I, I don't think, think it's so always either. been about wanting to win. Like, cause right. remember when he, when he went to Miami, he took a pay cut. Like, they had to restructure everybody's contract so the big three would fit together. Right. So they took pay cuts. So for you to walk away from so much money, to, it's not about money. I think he just wants to go somewhere else and win there. Fam, if he goes to New York, it's a wrap. I can't, I can't see him going to New York because Melo's not staying in New York. Okay, but then we had to talk early. They both play the same position. So losing Melo to gain LeBron? If you, if you go to New York, I think you are – pretty much back at square one where you were when you left Cleveland. That's I'm walking it. into that situation. No, ba- no, no matter that. where he goes, he's going to be back at square one. That's the whole thing. No matter where but, but he, he goes, but he, he's but back he, at square one. No, but one. he won't be. But he won't be. He won't be. Not in every situation. If he goes down to Chicago and Derrick Rose is healthy, they will win the Eastern Conference and be back into the playoffs. That's just in it. the final, if what, without a doubt. Help. That's if Derrick see, Rose see, help. Well, well, right. well, that, well, but, 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 but no, but Derek, but Derek has done all the things that he needed to do. So there's no reason why we can we, we we can believe that he won't be healthy. You know, he took all the necessary time. He's been working on his on, on his body. So you know, he took a whole year. So you know, he it was on the cautious side. He was they were cautious with Derrick Rose. See, if okay. he goes now, down to Houston. Game changer in the West. I mean, can you imagine throw, having the options to throw the ball into Dwight or or James Harden or LeBron dealing with those three? That's what I, we were talking about there early because what you got oh, I mean, Jeremy Lin facilitating game, game changer. Yeah, you you got another See, big three right there. You got the big three I mean, that imagine uh, um, LA uh, guys, Imagine this. Imagine how how much better he'll make Dwight Howard. I don't know about and Dwight. I, I think he would make Dwight Howard better, a lot better. And because of, like, uh, Kevin McHale's still the coach in Houston, right? Yeah, he so. is, but, you know, LeBron would be the coach, you know, let's be honest. No, no but I'm saying, though, because Kevin, Kevin McHale wants to get back to that old school play of basketball where you play, like, inside out. Like, he wants the big man to be an option first before you have to take a jump shot. Well, yes, yeah, so he kind of does. But if you got a LeBron, but if you got a LeBron on your team, then you don't. You, you yeah, like you can't you had do a that. Jordan. You, you, you know, everybody laughs in the NBA. Many people have laughed that have played the game, laugh at the whole idea that Phil Jackson then was running the triangle. Okay, they wasn't running no damn triangle. What they was running is pass the ball around and turn to seven seconds and throw it to Jordan and let him go one on one. I mean, that's what they that's what they were playing. It was a loose, yeah, uh, just was. like when he, Kobe and Shaq then was here. It was a loose. And loose, and that's the reason why nobody's been able to repeat that. I mean, if you think about it, every disciple that Phil Jackson has had, people, guys that were on his staff, they got head coaching jobs that taught the triangle, did it abysmal, abysmally, and uh, 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 and ended up getting fired really quickly because you can't because that that system you have to have you you have to have unique talent, unique skill set to play that system. See, in the NBA, so I mean, my feeling is. Is that LeBron's going to Houston? That's my feeling. I see Houston's that got too. a nice market down there. They got they, they got the infrastructure for him. It's uh, uh, he can live the bling bling. You know he you know he, he you know he got a nice upper uh, upscale Texas. Uh, you know they got no state tax in Texas. Ooh, so he's got a young a young Harden and uh, uh, a young uh, uh, Howard as well. He's going to be one of the older ones there. So, I mean, it's a perfect situation for him. And like you said, Kevin McHale. Kevin McHale is a player's coach. Coach. He's not a right. He's, he's from a, that Boston not, club. Yeah, he's a player's coach. 
See, so so LeBron, like and, and, LeBron and the fact that he the fact that he opted out clearly told me. I mean, I saw it on his face though, because LeBron knows Miami can't do that. That run is over. And don't be surprised either if Chris Bosh follows him wherever he goes. I wouldn't be surprised either. Um, besides, as much as Chicago would definitely take a run at LeBron, I feel Chicago should more so spend their money either on Melo or Kevin Love, truth be told. That's my honest mm. opinion. Mm. Kevin Love in Chicago, the pick and roll mm. with a healthy rose would be devastating. Well, I'm going to tell you, my brother, I'm, I'm with you on that. I mean, I, I think I – think, uh, my feeling is, is that Kevin Love would be a would, would be amazing in Chicago. That'd be perfect. He would. Because then you have then you have two two players of of skill. You have two highly skilled players who both are under are, are great team players and great passers of the ball. Him right. and Joe Kim Noah. Can you right. imagine him and Joe dealing with him? Oh my stars! And and they're oh my stars. <sighs> See, now your whole mind changed, didn't it? <laughs> hmm. I mean, that's your comment. Changed. If 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 the White Howard, I mean, if Derek Rose is healthy, that's to me the number one spot that he should go to. With the second number one spot, uh, second spot being Houston. I still want. I still prefer LeBron in Houston and and Kevin Love in Chicago. Now, the thing about this is Melo. The only thing that would stop Melo from leaving New York would be money. But New York ain't going to have that much money due to the fact that Stoudemire is eating up half their fucking uh, salary cap. And he's not worth it. <laughs> At the time, he was, bro. At the time, he was. Okay? And you know what? And, and, and I, think, I don't know if that's how it goes. I think a lot of people, I think a lot of people get paid based off of the last year performance. Then they, they feel like they balled out so hard on their contract season that they can walk in somebody's office and demand that much money and, and they get it because it's like, okay, well, he, he produced so we pay him this much money, he's gonna come here, he's gonna Man, produce. It's, and it's that's, the politics that's clearly move. not what Amari did. He could he did. It's the politics. The only person move, I feel though. that left their team and was worth the money that they got may have been James Hart. True. James but, Harden said, "Okay, so he's not going to give me what I want. Houston is. I'm going to go to Houston but James, and I'm going to play." Right, because James Harden left for the simple fact he wanted the ball more. It wasn't about the money. It was the fact that you guys did not make me a bigger role in the offense than what you did. Had you done so, this is how he felt. Had you done so, it'll probably be a ring on all of our fingers. But since y'all don't want to do that, I'm going to take my talents elsewhere. And to prove it, well, he should have known he that that's not his team. It doesn't matter, fam. That's what people think. If you sitting here on the court and you seen that guy number one is literally getting double teamed, he's getting covered, he's getting all the pressure, you're supposed to immediately start going for your second and your third option. Unfortunately, in James Harden's eyes, he wasn't second or third, okay? Because Westbrook would do whatever he wanted. Durant was the go-to man. James Harden felt like, dude, I'm not going to play third fiddle to these two. So he went to Houston. Best move he could ever make, okay? Well, Best I'm going to tell you, my brother, I, 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 have to, I have to disagree with you there. I don't think James went to Houston for anything other than money. I mean, money is right. a benefit, it, it, but his no, ego. I mean, I, think, no, I mean, I mean, that was the number one. Because look, guys, I, I, without without acting like you know, I don't want to give you the impression that I'm somebody that I'm not. But uh, I've been around the game a little bit, and and been around professional basketball a little bit. And if if you have an opportunity to get a big contract, to get a, get to get a max contract, one max contract. You go for it, no matter what sport, whether it's football, basketball, or baseball, guys go for it. And when because James the, Harden's contract came up, like whether it wasn't the reason he left or it was not, that's what they made it seem like. Okay, see, James Harden wanted to manage it. 
okay feels like we can't keep the max deal. I think I think the max deal was like maybe seventy five, eighty million. Okay, so he was like, no, we'll give you 67. Houston was like, no, we'll give you the whole eight. And he went to That's Houston. That's right. That's right. Because 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 those guys know, then Derek Rose is an example, and many guys have been examples of this. You, you have to strike while the, while the iron is hot. And, and, and there's only so – there's few guys. If you Google and look at all the salaries, guys, there are only a handful of players – that will get two max deals in a contract, and I mean in their career. Yep. There's there's even rarer guys who will get three max. LeBron is going to get three max contracts. Dwight Howard is going if he stays healthy, he'll get three max contracts. Carmelo, the five years Carmelo was at um, New with the Knicks, his contracts just just contracts, not endorsements, equal 129 million dollars he got. Okay, so and that's his second contract. He's getting ready to get a third one. Harden knows he has no chance of getting a second one if he didn't get to get the first one and get out and then show those guys you can build a team around me, so he can get that second one because he didn't get the first one uh, 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 when he first came in. See, KD got the first one. KD's got the second one. See, it's about those contracts. Mm-hmm. Because because you could end up like Rose, you could end up hurt, and I'm, or like Stoudemire. Stoudemire got two contracts; he will never get a third one. Dwayne Wade, two max contracts; he will never get a third one. And in my he's, opinion, he, he don't deserve the two he's going to get because he's been a lazy bum ever since LeBron said, "I'm taking my talents to South Beach." Well, my brother, I hate to say, I hate to I hate to rain on that parade, but the truth is, Dwayne has been hurt. Dwayne, Dwayne, Dwayne Wade has arthritis in that knee, and they're not he's telling people so about you, this. You telling me he's he been hurt for four years? Yeah, he's bro, been hurt. Bro, he been dating been Gabriel Union, dog. He hurt. <laughs> yeah, man, he, he's with been his hurt. baby mama he, issues, dog. That's God saying, "Fuck you." <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, he's been hurt. He's been hurt. And the reason he's – everybody knew this about Dwayne Wade when he came in because, he, first of all, he's only 6'3", and he plays like he's 6'6". He and does. same thing with this Derrick Rose thing. 6'3", plays like he's 6'6", explosive. All that stuff uh, uh, wears on your body, and you have a, you have a short career, okay, when you play like Dwayne Wade played and you play – because remember, he was the man – for a number of years. Yeah, he was. See, he was the man and won a championship before LeBron did. Let's keep it real. And when Shaq was on that team, he was the man. Not Shaq. See, so 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 it's it's about the money with the exception of the guys who are superstars. See, LeBron James, no matter what he opts out of, uh, I mean, opt out and out, he won't lose a penny, okay, because he'll make all that up on the back end, wherever he goes. Yep. And he See, still so has they're endorsements. Not, they're not losing no money. Let's not forget endorsements. So he has, well, Samson he pays he him. No money. He ain't losing no money. <laughs> Samson pays him. You name he me another no NBA money. player who got a cell phone company backing him. Is that $90 million contract for Nike still in effect? Absolutely. Oh, no. No, I'm telling you guys, LeBron James' portfolio, uh, uh, his portfolio is being is being driven. I mean, it's being the architect of LeBron's portfolio is Warren Buffett, Warren, the billionaire Warren Buffett. Juicy Them Warren dudes Buffett. are doing Warren Buffett. Heard is yes, Warren Buffett is doing for LeBron what Jerry Buss did for Magic. Yeah. Yes. Get that money. That's why when he's not. That's why when he's when he's off season, you hear about LeBron uh, uh, flying around the country, going to these these exclusive events in Colorado and other places, these world economic summits, and these, these where the players, where the real players show up. LeBron is right there with him. You don't hear about the, any other athletes there, and I'm nope. talking about Davos, and I'm talking about these other these, some of these exclusive places. Well, only these business dudes are. You don't see these other. I know other athletes there. It's just LeBron. 
I bet for a guy that didn't go to college, he definitely is a smart dude. And well, he got the right brother. people he, in his he, pocket. He, and and well, he here, got the right people the, in his ear. Don't think about college, my brother. That's that's the illusion. Okay, that's just more right. programming. These are the dudes that did that, that that said college can kiss my butt. Uh, Bill Gates, Paul Allen, uh, the guy that started Dale, the guy that started Oracle, Ted Turner, um, <laughs> the dude that started Facebook. I mean, look, real players know it's not about school. Right, it's college is knowledge. But, but it's about but knowledge. I mean, I'm in the aspect of like you know. He's got the right people in his ear, you know, helping him make the right decisions. Right, right. And, you know, Be- because that, that right, was my because, whole point. Was like from a guy who didn't no, go to right. college, you know, he he's still making very good choices. So Absolutely. like, you know, because most people are like, well, if I get hurt, I can always fall back on this because you know I did go to college and I did do the four years, but you know, LeBron didn't have that choice, so he's making good choices now. So if he but does here, get hurt and he can't play the game the anymore. Still got this to fall back on because he made the here's the thing about college. Here's the thing about college. Most of those cats who have this something to fall back on never got any degrees that really matter to anything. Majority right. of, majority of your athletes don't have degrees that will help them make money in the future. That's you right. That's right. Got <laughs> degrees because it's required that you go to class to play college ball. Things like you, the NFL. Or you pretend to go to class. Right. The NFL, the NHL, the <laughs> NHL, those are the kind of sports you have to have college in order to make it. There's nobody coming out of high school going straight to the NFL. Baseball, you can get away with that. Basketball, if you're the right size, stature, and have the right skill, you can get away with that. There's the other sports you can't get away with that. So these cats go and take uh, communication or music appreciation, shit like that. When you get American studies. Here's yeah. my question that I've been I always wanted to answer to. Like with the fact that they only make you the MBA requires that you do at least one year of college. Do you think that is necessary? Like should they should they just eliminate the whole college rule? Because I'm like I feel like if you're gonna go to college, you should go because you actually want to be there and get an education. Don't just go because okay, well I got this great talent to play basketball. I'm only subjected to do one year. I don't really give a fuck about it, but I got to be here just to get to the NBA. Like, I think they should just eliminate the whole rule in general. The rule well, is well, not you know, there. My brother, they, they're not, they're not going to eliminate it. They're going to add a year. Right. They're not. What they do is <laughs> what college does, okay, this is what college does for the NBA. It allows them to control the amount of talent that tries to play, okay? Because if you're required to go to one year of college, you've already weeded out tons of possible NBA players because you have to qualify to go to college, okay? You can't just walk into any college and say, hey, I got skills, let me be here. No, you got to actually meet an educational requirement to get in, which then means you got to meet a requirement to be on the team, okay? Secondly, once you make it on the team, you have to be on a respectable team that does something. So you can be a great player like LeBron, but if you play for the University of Green Bay and you ain't making no noise come NCAA playoffs, ain't nobody going to notice you. So that's yeah, another – Yeah, but then Brandon Jennings just go overseas for like two years. And that's – I don't year. recall him gotta, going to college. He, he, right, he did one year. He did one year. But then that's another oh, thing. Like, so like, they they never picked... say anything about his college. They say, well, he went overseas and he came back. Right. Because he, I was he didn't thing. go to college. Brandon's the, first, Brandon's the first high school player to stick his finger up at the NBA, his middle finger up to the NBA, and right. their rule about going to college for one year. He said, okay, right. I, 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 won't, I won't play your game. This is another thing that people don't know about Brandon. Is Brandon passed the, uh, the, the, the standardized test. The SAT, he qualified, but what happened is the NBA, I mean the NCAA, flagged his test, and so he said, "Oh, okay, you are gonna flag my test? Fuck, forget y'all. I'm I'm going overseas." So, so basically, first... Brandon Jennings found the loophole. Absolutely. He right, found... like I, I was hearing about like he didn't go to college; he just went overseas. And I guess that was some kind of a loophole because he he was over there, then he came back and he was eligible for the draft. Right, absolutely, and, and they've been, and they've been blackballing him ever since because they didn't like that he gave him the finger. They kept him out of all of the USA stuff. 
uh, the, 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 the tryouts and all of those things for those teams. They don't invite him. They say, yeah, yeah no more, no, no soup for you. And they even sabotaged his last contract. Uh, um, they, 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 the, the, the NBA is an interesting place, interesting uh, organization. It's a business. It looks after itself. They use the colleges, and the colleges use them so right. that they can continue to generate money. There's right. a secret collusion. There's a collusion that's going on between. That's why Ed O'Bannon right now is suing the NCAA, and in court right now, he suing he sued the NCAA for for his likeness and and all of that and uh, and everything. So, and see, that's the thing people don't understand is that there's collusion going on between the NCAA and the and the NBA. The same way there's collusion going on between the, the NCAA football as it relates to football and NFL as well. See, so. Uh, uh, the NBA gets what they get is a minor league system that they don't have to pay for, and what the right. NCAA gets is lo- uh, as long. That's why they're gonna up that thing up a year. If they get is they get to keep their players around and get all of the money that that comes in for all of the the, the NCAA the, the, the tournament stuff. Football exactly. and basketball is floating every sport on every college campus. Just know that. And, yep. and this is what like and with and with them making so much money is like. When you are a broke college kid and you get here and they fill your head with the knives, like I don't blame people for taking stuff from boosters. I just don't. Well, like, either. They, they're profiting off of you, like, like, why, like when I watched the, the Thirty for Thirty when they broke down the Fab Five. Like, yeah. That's gotta be depressing. That you are a broke college kid with no money in your pocket, but your jersey is in the Foot Locker window for like ninety bucks. Right. And you, college and you players see cannot make any money while in college. They can't even go wait get a, a job at McDonald's. Minute. Wait a minute, not even make money, my brother. It's worse than that. Uh, when when Luke Walton was at the University of Arizona, one of his one of his teammates uh, who came from a you know from the uh, you know parents weren't wealthy and all. Uh, uh, this kid's scholarship. Was they investigated this kid's scholarship because Bill Walton uh, bought him lunch. So your dad came he by took his lunch? son because he because he took his son went to visit his son on campus, took his son to lunch and took his friend to lunch too. I remember That's hearing a, that, about that. Yeah, and I thought so that was the, the NCAA, Well, of course, the NCA is a is a uh, is a is a racket. Like, what's well, a corporation? Right. Masking, mask, uh, uh, masking itself, parading itself around as a learning institution. When it comes right, like, to didn't they, athletic didn't they take sports, one of somebody's Heisman. I remember hearing yeah. that they tried to take or they took somebody's Heisman because of some they old took, shit. They took Bush's. They took George. Right, they took Reggie Bush. Bush's Heisman. All right. That's yeah. bogus. I'm like Reggie Bush. That dude. Too. How, do you, how do you how do you take something that like you earn the Heisman due to your accolades on the field? Right. Yeah, well, I mean, they, they, they do what you do off the field. Well, no, they take it because they can. I, I'm starting to see that. <laughs> they do. They do what they want to do. <laughs> well, see, see, my brother, my height. Uh, you know, like I said, I've been out of the country, my brothers, for the last three and a half years. I was over in South Africa, and most of us don't understand Americans. We don't understand the, the indoctrination that takes place here. We don't have any freedoms here. We have we have privileges. See, freedoms is something that's immutable; they can't take from you. But rights and privileges are something that I can privileges are something that I can take. Any child knows that who grew up in a home of a parent who was an authoritarian. You don't yep. do what they say; I take your video game. You don't do what they say; I take your allowance. You don't do what you say; I take this. That's what the United States of America is. Oh, I've been through that. The, 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 the illusion is that we have freedom. But we don't. We have privileges, and they uh, you're allowed to have them until they take them. Sad. That's why uh, Plexico Burris can lose his career and go to jail for shooting himself, and Michael Vick can go to jail for for fighting dogs in a state that fights dogs, and everybody knows that dog fighting is a part of that culture, and and it's 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 it seems like it's right. You know, when he shouldn't have had a gun. Really. You mean a professional athlete shouldn't have a gun, but but uh, uh, our, our brother Zimmerman should have one? 
Well, you know what? We're not even going to talk really? about dude. You know what I mean? Okay. So, so, so yeah, I know what you mean. So when, it comes to sports, when it comes to sports, Zimmerman. remember, this is business. And that's the thing that we as Americans of African descent have to understand. And our, our trauma, the trauma that we experience and our ancestors experience, it's time for that to end. America is a business. It is about business. And you, and you cannot grow and prosper if you hate business. Yeah. And that's what LeBron is showing. See, Pat Riley tried to play the old school game on him when he came out on SportsCenter and ch- chastised LeBron. Challenged his so-called challenges manhood and said, "Well, you know, you really don't leave a team if you lose. You know, you just man up and stick together and yada yada yada." And then today, when LeBron opted out, his statement in the media was, "Well, we expected this. We expected LeBron to opt out, and we and, and we look forward to the opportunity to meet with him and his representatives to let them know." what we have to offer, and we're, I'm confident that we'll resign LeBron. Where if that was the case, why did you try to shame him a, a, a few days before if you really felt that way? And, Le, and LeBron let them know. He let Pat Riley know. He let the NBA know. And, 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 and this is the key thing about this gentleman. Believe this. If LeBron was not in the prime of his career, they would try to blackball him. But because he's the NBA, the, the, he, he's clearly the best player in the league, and he's at the can't. prime of his career, they can't do anything about it. Yep, they can't but deny they him. they do not like this. They don't like this. Believe you me, they don't like LeBron having this kind of power. I don't blame he's him. Showing, he, he's showing the young people. He's showing all the young people that are coming behind him. This is business. And if you don't look at it as a business, then you will be left behind. You will be taken advantage of, and 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 you will be a sheep. You won't be a shepherd. So if you don't want, if you want to be a shepherd, not a sheep, then you must do business. You must not let your emotions get in the way. You must not uh, uh, care about what Donald Sterling thinks or doesn't think. It's business. See, Donald Sterling can hate black people all the I mean, uh, Americans of African descent all he want. Oh, you can say black people. We don't care here. <laughs> well, you know, well, I, I like to be. The uh, reason I change it, my brother, is because we need to stop the African American nonsense. See, we are not African Americans. We are Americans of African descent. I like that too. And if, and if you tra- and if, that. Like, I, I yes, and we if, say that, but don't nobody take us serious because you know the definitely fresh show sometimes can be fun, loving, outgo, wild. But when we try to get educational on people, they just don't want to listen to us. Because people are like, "Well, you're African American." I'm like, "Well, I'm I thought African American was an African who now lives in America. America he is born of African descent. I was right. not That's born right. in Africa. I don't. That's do right." That. That's why I'm an American. And, and, I was and, born here in America. Like, why can't I be it, American? Why must that's I be right. African American? And look, now imagine this, my brothers. And I'm just going to just segue a second here. I, we, we don't have to get on that topic, but just imagine. Imagine when that situation happened in Florida. If the headlines were American male shoots an unarmed American teenager, imagine okay. how different the story would have been. It would have been completely different. It but guess who don't want that story to be printed? They would have lost blood. Guess who don't want that story to be printed, though? Corporations and the powers that be don't want that to be, and 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 black leadership uh, uh, don't want that to be either. See, because that's who's benefited. But who ends up f- facing the wrath of this nonsense is everyday people like you and me. Most definitely, we're the we're the end of, we're the ones that pay the price for this nonsense. When I was over in Africa, not one place in our country that I went to when I was over there for almost four years, not one person said to me, hey, i African-American. The minute I opened my mouth, they said, hey, that's an American. Mm-hmm. When I lived in Japan, they said, hey, that's an American. When I lived in the Philippines, they said, hey, that's an American. When I travel, anywhere I travel, hey, that's an American. The only place I'm not an American is an American, is an America. This is the only place I'm not an American. 
Here I'm an African American. Regardless of the, the truth, see, and this is what I love about LeBron. I, I love what Chris, Chris Paul said, too, after they lost, when they tried to pin that, their, their loss on that, David, that, that, that Donald Sterling stuff. He said, I wish y'all would, y'all wish y'all would have stopped putting so much, so much stuff on this. We took one day to, get over, to deal with that and get over that. And I'm going to tell you right. why that he said that. Because he still got in his Mercedes. He still went to his multi-million dollar home. His his little son on the commercials still go to private school that most blacks, most Americans of African descent can't afford. Mm-hmm. See, they know the truth. They know the truth. It's, and we need to sad. get. And we need to get to that. We need to. St- we need to stop this. This African American thing. Most of us don't even know. This. This was a political term. That Jesse Jackson came up with to continue to make his to keep himself being relevant. You're gonna talk about that. That's dude. right. That, that's how we ended up in that. So LeBron is saying the new kids are saying, "I ain't, I'm not going for all that. I'm a businessman. My business is basketball." That's why he kept saying in the playoffs when they were talking about, "Well, you know, LeBron, you guys lost and you guys aren't playing well." LeBron said, "Hey." hey, hey. At the end of the day, this is basketball. This is basketball. I know what this is. This is business. Not monkey business. This is business. And I'm going to play the game. And I'm going to play it to win. So that's why he told Pat Riley and all the rest of the, in the league. But he just changed. He just turned the whole NBA upside down. Because this has never happened in the history of the game. Imagine if Magic Johnson in his prime opted out of L.A. Larry Bird in his prime opted out. Mike, Michael Jackson, Michael Jordan in his prime opted out. See, imagine that. Them dudes didn't do that. They went along. LeBron said, uh-uh. I'm the captain of my ship. I'm, I'm not, I, I am a, I am a, I am, we are, we are co-owners in this venture. I work for myself as well as you, Mick, Mickey Arison, and all, you, all the other NBA dudes. Y'all work for yourselves. You do what's best for you when it comes to the, your business. I do what's best for me because that's what business people do. No doubt. And that's what we as blacks need. That's what we as Americans of African descent need to understand. If we don't get on the business tip, and all of the all of the white brothers are showing us. All the ones that's not that's doing it without degrees are showing us. And Jay Z too. How many degrees Jay Z got? How about Puffy? How many degrees he got? They Man. showing you if you pay attention. It's not about this college. It's about learning. Mark Twain's famous one of his famous quotes was that he said was, "I never let school get in the way of my education." Because school isn't about education. It's about indoctrination. And today's world we live in, most of us that have smartphones are walking around in our, within, in our pockets with, 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 with all the information in the world, with a mini, com, a mini computer in our pockets. So anything that we want to know, we can search it, we can find out. In our just reaching our pockets, that's never happened in the world, in the history of the world like it is today. So you must take that information. You must use what is available, and live your dreams, and not be on the sideline, looking at others living their dreams. You must participate and live your own dreams. And use what is available. And that's what LeBron is doing. And that's what I love about LeBron. He knows he's going to take heat. But he knows a shepherd don't care how many times the sheep ba. Shepherd could care less. Go ahead on and ba. I know you're a sheep. Right. Yeah. No doubt. But we are getting close to the end of the show. Uh, so we definitely want to thank you for, for calling and tuning in. Um, it did take the the topic that we had and 
stretch it out a little bit more than what me and Juan could do ourselves. I mean, we definitely were, were there, but it let it stretch out a little bit more. Um, feel free to always tune back in. On the Definitely Press Show, we talk about many, many different things. So feel free to always chime in. We're always here, just not at this time. Uh, starting next starting next week, um, we're actually going to be moving to the daytime, people. Don't know how long we're going to be doing we're not, it. We might just do we're it. We're not moving. We're tattooing. I don't think we're, we're moving work. because this shit's going to be so bomb next week that it's just going to work. But, <laughs> no. Next week, people, we're not going to be on After Dark. Uh, we're actually going to do the Dead Fresh Morning Show. We're trying something new. Plus, it's the host birthday next week, too. So, right. maybe we can so get some of his family those, members to call in and the- talk about them. So for all those of the female persuasion who are listening, if you would like to wish Fresh a happy birthday, I do accept uh, tweets, Facebooks, and Instagram videos, and Vine videos. Uh, if you would like to tag me on Instagram with a happy birthday video, my Instagram name is Young Fly Gifted. Y-O-U-N-G-F-L-Y-E-G-I-F-T-E-D. It is Young Fly Gifted. Tag me. I'll make sure, you know, I repost it. I'll send y'all a shout-out, you know what I'm saying? But if you don't go say happy birthday via Instagram, please make a video. That's all I ask of you. Uh, for all those thirsty females who have been trying to get my phone number, uh, twerk videos, go ahead and send me those, too. You might want to do those. You're a horrible person. You're a horrible I'm person. not a horrible person. I'm shooting my shot right now. It's my birthday. It's, it's not, it's not birthday. your birthday yet. You don't shoot your shot yet, bro. You can shoot it on your birthday. Um, no, no, I'm not shooting my shot. On my, I'm shooting my shot leading to my birthday because I want them to be aware of what I want for my birthday. Uh, either way, goes. you're a horrible person. But definitely, people, make sure you tune in tomorrow at 9 a.m. Um, sound dropping. Uh, the Fin C edition, Ladies of Hip Hop Part 2, is actually going to be on, hosted by myself. Um, I actually got a special mix um, actually sent to me from DJ Lady J out of Britain, I have to remember. So we actually got a a, a little foreign DJ this time. Uh, DJ Deftone is actually on vacation for the summer. He's making moves. Might be moving here, move, might be moving there. Making moves, making million dollar moves. He's definitely making his moves. And Tasha's taste will not be live this week. Um, she's actually back on set working on the movie, the untitled movie, um, at the current moment in time. So we're going to actually have to do an old episode. I'll find out which one I want to do. I'll let you know by tomorrow. Uh, but at the end of the day, people, always go to ToneDefRadio.com to find out everything Tone Def Radio is going on. You get things from Minnie's Rant to One True Love, written by uh, Nefrini Love, as she actually has a recent one. Uh, videos, new release artists, mixtapes, chosen by Def Fresh himself in regards to what he recommended people check out, as well as just past episodes that we have going on here as well. Archives, the whole nine yards at Tone Def Radio. Dot com. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and close tonight's show out with another local artist from Milwaukee. Uh, he's been on Tone Dev Radio so many times, he's damn near part of the staff. Um, he's coming off his new debut album, which actually drops on the 28th. He will be in the studio with me next week on the 30th uh, as we do a listening party from Mr. Genesis Ricky himself. This particular track has been played and has made the top 10 of Tone Dev Radio for the past three weeks. Because you people keep picking it, not because I got any favoritism. You people are actually picking it so So stop saying I'm setting and rigging shit, because I'm not. But this track is actually called Rose Gold, and Fresh, what the fuck you gotta say before I close the show out? Because I'm about to go hoop as soon as we done. I'm looking right now. She ain't this about a bitch. All right, people. Rose Gold by Genesis Vinci. <laughs> <Benji. laughs> this is... This is Rose Gold by Genesis Ringy featuring Taz Taylor. Check it out. Drop us a line on ToneDeafRadio.com. Tell us what you think of it, people. All right. Good night. Bye.
The feeling is so astounding. I always wanted to be an astronaut. The challenge with discovery is that it's in the blast a lot. Trying stuff usually blows up in your direction. In a world full of questions, I provided one answer. I'm just young, wild, and reckless with no real sense of direction. People told me I was sinning. Friends told me I was winning. So the day let's live it up. Tonight we live it fast, live it life like a simple, like a simple. And live we pray. Right in the deep, 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 deep,